Okay, so this is a trial presentation for DrupalCon Denver. My name is Johan Falk and I'm gonna talk about essential knowledge for Drupal beginners. So if you're a Drupal beginner and you want some essential knowledge then this is the right place for you. Here's some information about how to reach me on different uh, real world and online places. Uh, feel free to contact me if you have questions or opinions or ideas or whatever uh, after this conference, after this talk. If you have uh, uh, comments uh, during the talk, then please, I would suggest uh, uh, saving them for the end of the presentation because I'm going to go on in a pretty high speed. Here we go. This presentation will be a quest. Uh, for you uh, to find the knowledge that you need to survive and find your way in the Drupal universe. So bring out your sword and your boots and uh, your lantern and things that you need, probably a rope and things as well, uh, because we are going out. Uh, we will uh, go on five sub-quests. Uh, the first one will be understanding Drupal from a perspective, what this Drupal thing is about. Uh, the second quest is uh, the uh, getting the essential knowledge about Drupal technology uh, because Drupal is a tech thing and you probably need some knowledge about this technology at, at, at least to find your way around. You, I'm, I'm not going to do any technical presentation or technical uh, uh, training or something like this but you need to know things about this technology at least. Third quest is about the Drupal community. The thing that is, uh, I would say, at the heart of this Drupal thing. I'm going to talk a bit about that and we need to know what this thing is about. Number four uh, is about how Drupal work is organized uh, to understand how uh, these things work, the basics of them. And finally, but not least, uh, five ways to make Drupal people love you, which is, of course, what this uh, is all about. Maybe. So, before uh, moving along, uh, who am I? My name is Johan Falk, as I said, uh, I live in Sweden, Stockholm usually. Uh, I'm a Drupal trainer, I do a lot of screencasting, uh, sh well, showing people how to use Drupal. Uh, I've written a few Drupal books and I do Drupal courses every now and then. Uh, in my day-to-day -day life, though, I am a teacher, math and physics teacher, uh, so if you want to know things about quantum mechanics, uh, you can talk to me after this presentation as well. So, time to go on an adventure. And the first quest uh, relates to Drupal in a perspective and who uses Drupal. It turns out that quite a bit of people use Drupal and that's probably why you're here. You, I guess you're new with Drupal and you want to learn more things about it. And, uh, well, quite a few people feel like you. If you look at the, say, top million websites or so on the, on the internet, then uh, you'll find that 2% of these are, are using Drupal as their backend to, to do the uh, to, to present content to people. Which is kind of interesting, like quite a few websites. Uh, and these range from small hobbyist websites and churches and, and societies and things uh, uh, to big, really, really big high traffic sites uh, on the web. And all of these can use Drupal and I'm gonna show you a few examples of sites using Drupal for, for different uh, uh, goals. Uh, first one you've probably heard, uh, one guy who uses Drupal is Mr. Obama. Here is his website. Uh, he uses this one to uh, tell the people of America about uh, things he finds important. It's kind of his blog. Uh, good thing to add. Drupal can be a blog. Good thing. Uh, second example here is uh, the Grammy website. Uh, they switched to Drupal so a few years ago and that was the first year the website actually sustained the traffic from the live um, gala where they uh, give out the Grammy Awards. Um, this is uh, another way of getting, uh, well, using a website and using Drupal to uh, push a lot of information and content out to a lot of users. So it's kind of one-way communication compared to the last website, the, the Obama website, the White House website. Uh, this one has a lot of media and things on it. Uh, so Drupal can be used for that as well. Here's another example, The Economist, one of the, uh, I think, best uh, news magazines in the world. Uh, they switched to Drupal uh, to get more interactivity on the site. They have a lot of content that they push and, and, well, uh, and publish to, to people in general, but they switched to Drupal to get more interactivity. They, they wanted to have uh, better options, uh, better uh, possibilities for people to comment on the website and, and contact people and discuss and, and do things. So they switched to Drupal. And Drupal is very good for that. Drupal started off as a community software uh, for people to discuss. So 
This is one of uh, Drupal's big things, uh, making people interact with each other. Uh, and that's, well, that's also the case for this website. This is Twitter, uh, Twitter developers using Drupal. Uh, they use it as kind of internal tool, but also external tool for people to connect, uh, Twitter developer to connect with each other and discuss and share ideas and things. So this is primarily discussing with each other, not pushing content from, from one publisher to a lot of, of people. Drupal is good for that as well. This, Twitter are kind of a techie uh, company, you would say, so that they kind of know what they do and they find Drupal a good choice for their business. Uh, here's another example. This is IKEA. Uh, uh, I come from Sweden, so I, I would like to talk about IKEA a bit. Um, uh, this is a community site they have uh, that is run on Drupal. And, uh, well, yeah, this is another example of people communicating, talking with each other, the, the members of the site building up the content and, and uh, well, highly interactive site. Drupal is very good for that. Then, of course, after the, all these examples, you are, are, of course, interested in why. Why do people use Drupal? Um, well, uh, the most important uh, factor in this, I think, is that Drupal is flexible. You can build most any website you want with Drupal. Um, you can have it for your personal blog, like Mr. Obama. You can have it for a big uh, community site, like IKEA. You can have it like... Um, a media site, you can have uh, online stores, you can have online booking uh, uh, sites and, and, and whatnot. Uh, Drupal can do most of the things for you and that's, that's kind of great. Drupal is flexible. And that also means that you're not stuck with one solution if you, you buy in uh, into a community website software uh, and build a site and later on you realize that, hey, I need a web shop as well. Uh, you, you don't have to regret if you choose Drupal because you can do that with Drupal as well and that's, that's kind of good. Um, number two, D Drupal gives short time to market. When you build a Drupal website, uh, the normal way of doing it is that you download something called Drupal Core, the Drupal standard installation, uh, and then you add what's called modules that extend this functionality and you can rapidly use these modules to build uh, the product that you want, the, the, the end product that you need uh, as your website. And that means you spend less time on development and more time on actually doing good stuff. Uh, and that's of course good. Short time to market uh, is one of the really good things with Drupal. Uh, now if you, well, never mind, we're gonna go north and west and south here and then we go west. And then we find that Drupal is an, an open source. Uh, Drupal is licensed under what's called open source, which for most people mean that Drupal is free. And, and that's true in uh, uh, more than one way. Drupal is free, so you can download the Drupal software and Drupal modules and Drupal themes, which I'm going to talk about later, for free. You don't have to pay a penny to start using it. And that's, that's kind of awesome. And that means that, that you can uh, experiment and do a lot of things, and, and you don't need to spend money on licensing and there's a low threshold in that way, and that, that's great. But even more important is that Drupal is uh, free as in free speech. You're free to uh, do a lot of things with the Drupal software. Uh, you can modify it, improve it, you can uh, send it on to others, you can uh, change it and, and have it uh, customized for your needs, which is in some uh, circumstances really, really important. When you want to be sure that you can make the software do what you want, then it's in, uh, essential that you can uh, change the, the software as you want. Drupal is good for that. Uh, one more thing when it comes to free, Drupal being free, you can download and install Drupal and use Drupal without paying a, paying a penny. You can use it for 10 years and not pay a penny. Uh, but there are a lot of companies uh, that want to sell you services uh, for Drupal, like uh, building websites, like maintaining websites, uh, uh, giving you training, uh, having online, well, 24-7 services and, and, and whatnot. If you want to, you can pay to get this, uh, but it's optional, and that's kind of good. And this is, uh, uh, I think, the, the most important reason, uh, at least for me right now. Drupal has an awesome community. That's one of the really big things with Drupal. Online, well, um, open source software has 
usually some kind of community around it that helps building and maintaining the software and Drupal's community is really awesome. It has been remarked several times that Drupal's uh, community is big and it's very lively. It has a lot of good people, good ideas uh, and a good, a good spirit in the community and this is uh, essential in many different ways. You can't compare this community to uh, the traditional software company. The community is are the people building and uh, maintaining the, the product, which in this case is Drupal. And that Drupal has an awesome community can be translated to there is a big and awesome company building and maintaining this product called Drupal. I don't really like the comparison to a company because I'm I kind of like open source and company it makes me think of someone owning Drupal and I mean in in open source we own Drupal uh, collectively and that's uh, that's a good thing. Well, the Drupal community, I'm going to talk more about that later on, so let's move on to the dark things about Drupal. Because uh, there must, of course, be downsides to Drupal as well. So let's have a look at these. We have heard a few things about why Drupal is good. Now, why might Drupal be bad? Uh, you might have heard people saying that Drupal is slow. Uh, and yes, this is true. Drupal can be slow. You cannot install Drupal and expect to uh, be able to tackle uh, thousands or millions of, of visitors uh, per minute or something. Um, and this is true for any CMS, that uh, content management system of a certain scale. Drupal is big and complex and that comes at a price and that means that it's not uh, made to out of the box uh, accept vast amounts of traffic, uh, just like any other complex CMS. But uh, just like any other complex CMS, you need to be able to tackle this in some other way. You need to build, uh, usually you use caching and, and things, which is a technology I won't go into. Uh, but but you build like walls and, and solutions to, to allow really heavy traffic, like the Grammy site. And Drupal allows doing this in a good way, so you can build your site and uh, uh, accepting a lot of traffic and still make it work. But uh, you, if you want to build a, a moon rocket, you need to know how to do it and uh, it takes a lot of skill to, to build the high traffic, well the, the high performance sites. You can do it with Drupal and you can do it with other CMSs but it takes a lot of skills. More than Drupal is difficult to learn. That's something that I get a lot because I do Drupal training and well yes it's true. Drupal is big and complex. It's, it's a, well, a professional sized framework for building uh, websites. Uh, you have to expect it to be kind of complex. Uh, I'm not saying that Drupal couldn't be easier to learn, because it definitely could, uh, but uh, Drupal is still, well, if you go into Drupal and expect everything to just fall in place and understand everything, then uh, you're either really, really smart or you you don't really know what you're going into. Because Drupal is big and complex and, and yeah, expect it to be difficult sometimes. And um, third bad thing that you might heard or might experience yourself, Drupal is ugly. And well, I would say that that is true pretty often. Drupal has traditionally, traditionally been built by super geeks who are really good at writing code that perform well, uh, but not that good at, when, uh, at front end and making things look good. And that uh, has some good sides and some bad sides. The bad side is that uh, pretty often you end up, well, you find user interfaces and, and things that are pretty ugly, pretty unintuitive and, and things like that. It has improved a lot. It has improved a lot, uh, especially uh, in the release of Drupal 7, where we had uh, good people looking at the usability of Drupal. Uh, but there's still a lot of things that can be improved. And the good things with this though, the super geeks building Drupal for 10 years, is that you get a, a product, a, a code base that is really good and can do a lot of things. And that's of course very good. Okay, that was the first quest finished. We are doing pretty well so far. Uh, you are awarded with the Drupal bottle that you can uh, put in your stash and, and uh, maybe hide a fairy in it or something. Uh, because you might need it, we are going on to the second quest right away. The second quest is Drupal Tech Knowledge. We will uh, learn about the technology of Drupal. So, it will start by uh, looking at who works with Drupal and what kind of skills would I need if I want to do that work. 
And uh, as we'll see, there are three specific Drupal development roles, and there are some other roles as well. We'll have a look at these. And starting with this one, role number one is called the site builder. This is if you uh, stumble on a pe uh, person here at the conference uh, and they say, oh, well, I'm a site builder. Uh, you might wonder what that means. And it means this. It means that this person uh, creates Drupal site functionality with point and click tools. This is a person who knows how to download modules. I'm going to explain what that is. Uh, and install them on a Drupal site and make funny, well, useful things happen. And usually site building, clicking, point and clicking can get 80 to 90% of functionality in place. So this is a really important part of building a Drupal site. If you would like to become a Drupal site builder, then the entry level skill that is uh, required is curiosity. If you, have the curi if you are curious, then you can become a site builder basically. If you want to become really good at site building, then you need to have good knowledge of Drupal's contributed modules, the modules that you download from Drupal.org. That's the first role, the site builder role. Then we go on to the second role, the coder, or what's usually called the developer. Uh, I, I prefer to say that uh, everyone working with site development with Drupal is a developer, so I'm going to call this coder. But if you meet someone out, out there in the hallway and say, well, I'm a developer, then it means this. Uh, it means that she uh, creates all the functionality uh, on the site that site builders cannot create. When you reach the end of the line of the pre-made modules, then you call in your coder and she writes new modules and also what's called glue code, small pieces of code that help the existing modules do a bit more, uh, talk to each other or, or whatever is necessary. They do a lot of other things as well, like integrating with external systems and working with the database and, and things like that, migrating data, but I'm just uh, mentioning a few things here. If you would like to become a Drupal coder, then what you need to get started is PHP coding skills. You also need to have some site building knowledge, actually, but I'm not listing this here. And if you want to become really good at Drupal coding, then you need good knowledge of the APIs in Drupal core and contributed modules. This is the functions that are available and you can use when writing your own code to build upon the existing functions in Drupal core and the contributed modules. Okay, uh, role number three, the themer. Uh, themers are a particular, well, no, never mind. Themers are good. Um, Themers are the people who make Drupal look the way you want. They take a Drupal site and turn it into something beautiful, and this is an art. Uh, they also can take Drupal sites and turn them into what uh, the, Drupal, the site visitors, the users want, which is definitely an art. Uh, very important art indeed. Uh, if you want to do this yourself, then you need HTML, CSS and JavaScript skills to get started. Uh, these are the most important things. You also need some Drupal basic skills like the site building skills again, like, just like the coding uh, thing. If you want to become really good uh, as a Drupal themer, then you uh, need really good knowledge of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And these are like uh, big things in themselves, so you can spend a lot of time learning them. Uh, you also need uh, some knowledge of the Drupal APIs because you will start interacting with Drupal and doing more cool things and you will probably want to have some knowledge about usability research because this is an important part of making Drupal look and work the way it wants. Alright, these are the three main roles when it comes to Drupal developers but we also have the others. What about the others then? Well, in any, Drupal, in any site project, a website project, you have Things like designers and project managers and editors that create and update content on the site. And you probably also somewhere in the basement have a server guru who knows how to set up Linux and MySQL and things and optimize these in a good way. You probably have more roles as well, like a seller or a client manager or whatever. Uh, and these depend, well, all these roles depend on what kind of company you're looking at and what Drupal shop you're looking at. But you, uh, these are the, well, the first three roles are the ones that are Drupal specific, uh, I would say. Um, and usually, pretty often, uh, all, many of these roles, several of these roles are combined into one person. So in one company, you can have a person that is a site builder and a 
a coder and also a server guru. And then you have another person who is project manager and themer and also site builder, for example. Uh, but that uh, shifts from company to company. All right, the quest if is halfway done. Uh, this second quest, that's uh, very nice. Uh, and you are awarded with a bug squashing hammer. Very nice. Uh, this is, of course, well, you, you kind of find a treasure chest and open it up and you find this bug squashing hammer. Uh, and this will become useful, I think, in the future when we move on with our quest. Hoo-hoo! Because the second part of this um, uh, second quest is uh, looking at some Drupal lingo. Talking to Drupal geeks so you can understand what they say. And this will be some words that we, uh, I describe to you and you have to study them and then they appear in a test somewhere and uh, hopefully you get 80% right and you then pass the test. Uh, anyways, uh, you will hear the word core. Usually uh, you say Drupal core or just core. Uh, by this, uh, people mean the things included in default Drupal. When you download Drupal from drupal.org, you get Drupal core. Okay. Second thing is contrib module or contributed module. Uh, these are modules that you download from drupal.org and use on your Drupal site add to Drupal core to create site functionality. Uh, add or add or uh, change site functionality so you can have new stuff uh, happening on your site when you install new modules that's kind of nice then the third term here that is important is the theme a theme is the thing that a themer does uh, and a theme decides and governs the look and feel of a drupal site uh, and that is as i said an art in itself an important art okay moving along here are three more words uh, the most peculiar one is node, and uh, usually, pe well, in Drupal 7 we kind of excluded the word node and we talk about content instead, but you still see the word node every now and then, and you will definitely hear people saying it. A node is a piece of content on your Drupal site that has its own page, and that's kind of the long and short of it. You can We can talk about this for a few hours, but I'm going to stop there. Uh, you will probably hear people talking about content types as well if you go into the Drupal world. A content type is nothing more fancy than a template used for creating content. Uh, kind of useful, good thing to have when you have different types of content. Uh, you will also hear people talk about fields, especially now with Drupal 7 and things, uh, fields are uh, kind of hot. Uh, fields are uh, information containers to have in these uh, content types. So you can have them for uploading images or adding uh, text or, or uh, titles or author or something uh, to a piece of content. Uh, these are used on content types and on more things and I'm gonna say a few words about this more things because one term that you will hear maybe is the entity. This is the most esoteric of all the terms I'm going to talk about. When entities were introduced in Drupal, I think they were first called thingies. So if you want to impress Drupal people, you can talk about thingies instead of entities and they will think that you're really cool. Um, this is a new big thing in Drupal 7 and this is a unified way of uh, managing contents and users and comments and a number of other things on your website. So they work together in a neat way. You don't need to learn the technicalities of this, but if you uh, uh, if people talk about entities, uh, translate that into thingies and you will get along fine. Okay, and with that the second quest is completed. You are awarded with a treasure chest that contains the Drupal phrase book. Isn't that amazing? Uh, I want the, you to put this in your pocket right away because we're going to quest number three. Okay, quest number three is, I think, the most important one because this is about the Drupal community, uh, the, the bunch of people doing Drupal. And who is this? Well, at the heart of this is uh, the statement that Drupal is a collaborative project. We are people working together with Drupal to do Drupal, to make Drupal. Uh, and it could look like this. This is a photo from DrupalCon Copenhagen last year. Uh, I think this is one or one and a half or maybe two thousand people uh, gathered together to 
do good things, have fun together, talk about Drupal all day long and probably all night long as well, uh, work together, improve stuff, uh, have presentations like we're doing here, and in general have fun. Uh, we share a passion, most of it, well, people at the conference, mo uh, certainly people uh, on this photo share a passion, and that, that passion is Drupal. Uh, we do Drupal, well, uh, this is, well, I could actually stop here because this is the most important thing uh, in this whole presentation. Uh, Drupal is a collaborative effort. These are people, they, I could call these my colleagues. I, I, in some way, have thousands of colleagues that work together in this Drupal project. Uh, we try to get along and uh, talk and improve things and, well, make good things happen. Uh, that's what we do. And... Uh, well, in this uh, pretty large amount of people, we have like half, more than half a million people engaged in Drupal one way or another. There are quite a few really smart people and clever people that are really good at some things. And these can make amazing things happen. And here at conferences like DrupalCon, uh, if you get a lot of smart people uh, in one room, you get, kind of hit critical mass and really cool things start to happen. I'm going to show you a few examples of these later on. But first I'm going to talk about how we treat each other in this community. We have a few unwritten rules in the Drupal community. You could say that these are now written down on this slide and you're right, but there are still in some way unwritten rules. Uh, first and most important is that everyone is welcome. Uh, we have, well, uh, if, one, if you want to join Drupal, you are welcome to join the community. That, that's the, the basis of it. We don't have any secret uh, member cards or anything. You just get a, an account on drupal.org and you're a part of the community. And we think that everyone can contribute. Uh, I heard someone say that the smartest person in the room may be the one who just entered. And I think in this room, uh, the people listening to this presentation, there are a lot of people new to Drupal and I think a few of these people will become really, really awesome contributors to the Drupal project. You will do things that I could never do with Drupal, and that's fantastic. That's the way it should be, and we should be welcoming to new people, because if we aren't, we're going to miss a lot of good opportunities to make uh, awesome, thing, awesome things happening. Yes. Uh, third bullet here. Uh, Drupal is uh, what's called a duocracy, well, sometimes called a duocracy which means that the one who gets things done gets more influence. Um, in this kind of kind of loosely organized project, there are a lot of things that just are just waiting to be done. And if, pe if someone comes around and actually uh, do these uh, things, uh, he or she will be recognized for that and have more uh, influence. People, people will listen more to this person uh, when he or she talks about the subject. If you're interested in more things uh, when it comes to written and unwritten rules about Drupal, I recommend going to drupal.org slash dcoc and look at the Drupal Code of Conduct, which is really interesting. Uh, Alright, so if you want to get engaged, if you feel that you might be this person who will eventually make really awesome things happen with Drupal, then I recommend uh, getting engaged in the community by going to Drupal conferences. If you're at a Drupal conference right now, then I congratulate you. You have uh, done the right thing. These are organized twice every year, one in Europe, one in North America, and they're talking about starting up one more that will alternate between Asia and South America, but we'll see about that. Uh, if you don't want to wait for these international Drupal cons, you can go to a local Drupal meetup. You can find these probably at groups.drupal.org, which is a good place for uh, to discuss Drupal in smaller groups, like uh, lo local user groups. If you search there, you'll probably find a, a group for your city or your country or whatever. Uh, the best way, though, if you want to get in direct contact with Drupal people is the online chats, the IRC, Internet Relay Chats. Uh, at any time of the day, especially when it comes to Drupal conferences, you'll find a few hundred Drupalists logged in and talking to each other. Many of these are just waiting to help uh, new people out and, and answer questions and things. So if you want to have, well, face-to-face -face is not really the term, but key-to-key -key or screen-to-screen -screen communication uh, live with uh, Drupal people, uh, try to go, uh, go to drupal.org slash IRC and you'll get more instructions of how to uh, reach these chats. 
Uh, you can also find forums and discuss, not live but uh, with some kind of delay. Uh, and groups.drupal.org again is a good place to start. If you have a particular interest with Drupal, uh, then chances are that you will find a group for just this interest at groups.drupal.org. If you want to find more ways to get involved, then drupal.org slash contribute is a good place to start. And I think this is it. This is uh, the end of the third quest, which means we are awarded something. Yes, this is the helmet that will protect us in future uh, adventures. This is, by the way, an example of what could happen if you take a number of really smart people in a room and, and make them work together and come up with ideas. Then you'll end up with like Drupal hats. And we'll see here, we also have uh, Drupal socks here uh, portrayed as the boots that we can put in our inventory and, and use to walk very far or very fast on this adventure. We have things like uh, the lantern that is used to, well, if you go into a cave and you want to see the bats flying around in there, you want to have a lantern. And we have a Drupal lantern. And here's the most crazy thing probably, the Drupal armor that will protect you against evil monsters. Uh, again, one of the things, crazy things that might happen if you have a lot of Drupal people in the same room. And, and there we go. We have now the fourth quest starting. Uh, learning how Drupal work is organized. Wow. Um, this is, of course, a pretty interesting question. We have half a million people uh, engaged in Drupal one way or another. How the heck do you get these people to work together in a good way? Uh, and I'm going to talk a bit about this and I'm going to start with the most formalized way, most formalized thing of uh, when it comes to Drupal work. And that is the Drupal core. Uh, the the uh, most sacred uh, code when it comes to Drupal, well, maybe. Um, it turns out that it isn't really a good idea to have half a million people uh, doing changes in the same code at the same time. Um, and the way we work with this in Drupal that is usually that we have two persons uh, that can do the actual changes to code, to, that decides what kind of changes goes in and what doesn't. But then we have a thousand people uh, well, and for Drupal 7 it was a thousand people, for Drupal 8 it will probably be more. But a thousand people writing code and doing uh, suggestions to changes and updates and improvements to this Drupal core code, uh, which are then reviewed by these two uh, persons doing the actual change. These are called, called maintainers, by the way, the two uh, uh, gatekeepers or something. Uh, they are main, the maintainers of Drupal core. Um, and we have a thousand people helping these out, writing code and, and uh, suggesting stuff. And even more people discussing uh, changes and improvements in what's called issue queues. And Drupal, ha Drupal Core has its issue queue where people discuss. And I don't know how many people, but I, I know there are many thousands of people commenting and, and suggesting things there. And these suggestions eventually lead up to uh, patches that are called, the, these are changes to the code. Uh, which are then discussed and improved and discussed and improved and eventually they go into Drupal core and eventually we have Drupal 8 coming out. Uh, some of these changes, uh, uh, it's pretty good to know, uh, when there are large changes they are nowadays uh, um, collected in what's called initiatives. And these initiatives, we have like seven or something initiatives for Drupal 8 and these are then coordinated by an initiative lead that in turn has a lot of people working together and, and doing the, these improvements before they are reviewed and then taken into Drupal core. Big thing, uh, a lot of talk about Drupal core, let's, let's uh, talk about release cycles, yes. Um, I started talking about Drupal 8 and that's kind of crazy, hey we have Drupal 7 here, what's Drupal 8? Should I, should I wait with Drupal until Drupal 8? No you shouldn't. Um, uh, when will Drupal 8 be released is a pretty common question and the answer to that, the correct answer to that is that Drupal 8 is ready when it's ready. Uh, I heard someone said that uh, Drupal 8 will be re released about 18 months after Drupal 7's plateau of productivity, which means that when Drupal 7, well, the, the modules for Drupal 7 are not uh, no longer an avalanche, but kind of have leveled out and, and are stable and, well, 
uh, we have found the way to work with Drupal 7, then one and a half year later, Drupal 8 should be released. Uh, some people say that this might be end of 2013. My own guess is uh, first half of 2014, but we'll see about that. And the baseline, the bottom line is that Drupal 8 is ready when it's ready, and it will take some time. Uh, it might be good to mention that Drupal, the Drupal community supports the two most uh, recent releases of Drupal. We have security updates and things. So right now we have security updates for Drupal 7 and Drupal 6, and when Drupal 8 comes out, we'll have updates for Drupal 8 and Drupal 7. And Drupal 6 will officially no longer be supported. Wow. That was Drupal core then. What about the rest of Drupal, which is uh, kind of the big part of Drupal, the, all the modules, all the themes and, and things that you can download? Well, this is much more loosely controlled. As it turns out, anyone can start a sandbox project at Drupal.org. Anyone is allowed to write their own module, do their own theme and upload to Drupal.org. But these will be um, contained in what's called sandboxes. Uh, so you work on them, um, you start on your own, uh, and, and then you can add your co-maintainers and, and things that people who help you out and, and do changes in the code. Um, um, but these are contained in sandboxes, so they are, they're kind of flagged to say that this is unofficial, we don't really know what, the quality of this. Uh, but anyone is allowed to contribute and create their own stuff. If you want to have your sandbox turned into a real project, a real module, or a real theme, then you'll need to have gone through, uh, well, have gotten a some kind of driver's license. Uh, and, well, you should have applied for uh, this permission to turn, uh, turn sandboxes into full projects, uh, and your code is then reviewed and someone says that, yeah, th this person seems to know what he or she is doing, so this is fine. Or they could say, well, you should read up on these security standards that we have, or this kind of API that, well, never mind. Eventually you get this driver license and you can uh, promote your sandbox projects into full projects and create releases and things. And you want to have co-maintainers that help you maintain your modules and help well, working the issue queue and, and, and do things. Never mind. Uh, enough about contrib projects. Uh, oh, and here's a good point. Here's a good point. Uh, we have no official certification in the Drupal world. Uh, you will not find uh, an official paper saying I'm a certified Drupal developer. And if you find that paper, you, you, I can tell you right now that you should not take it too seriously because there is no official certification. There has been quite a bit of a discussion about this, and there certainly are positive effects of having certification, like credibility is a good thing. Uh, on the other hand, there are people who think that certification will harm the Drupal community because people will start focusing more on the certification uh, skills uh, and things you need to, to do to become certified and focus less on the things we do to uh, make the community better. And I'm one of the people who thinks that certification might actually be bad uh, and we could uh, probably talk uh, a bit more about this afterwards, but I'm going to move on now on this fourth quest, which I think has ended. Yes, fourth quest is completed and we get the stamina potion. Very nice. We'll need this uh, because we have a long journey so far and we're about to uh, go into the final, uh, the final quest. Are you ready? I'm gonna take that as a yes, and I am moving on. Last quest, uh, but probably most important one, five ways to make Drupal people love you. Of course you uh, feel now that Drupal is the greatest thing that has happened since sliced bread, and you want to become a part of this community and use Drupal, and of course you also want Drupal people to love you, because you feel that that is the right way. You might think I'm strange, and I'm strange. Uh, Never mind. Uh, first way of getting Drupal people to like you is to say thank you. A lot of people only get feedback when things doesn't, uh, doesn't work uh, and, and things break down or it's difficult to understand. If you also give feedback when things work as, uh, as they should, when people do good things like creating Drupal in the, in the first place or doing good, good documentations or module or whatever, uh, say thank you. People will... Uh, 
notice you and think that you're a good person. Uh, number two other things you can do to make Drupal people love you. Take care of easy issues in the issue queues. The big modules in Drupal have like huge issue queues and a lot of the issues there are people saying I don't know how to install this or I I don't know how to get started or I did this and I don't know really what happened things like that. Uh, if you have used Drupal a little while then you can go into an issue queue and you will find that many of the issues there are things that you can actually answer, uh, answer the issues that you can solve. And if you do that, the module maintainers will no uh, notice that you're doing good stuff in the issue queue, uh, and they will be grateful uh, to you. And eventually, they might start loving you. Number three of the things you can do to make Drupal people love you, improve documentation. There's always room for improving documentation. Drupal has a big a community maintained wiki of documentation. You'll find it at drupal.org slash documentation. And if you help documenting a module that you downloaded or uh, help documenting something that you just, just did and, and uh, would like to show others, or you find a documentation page and that needs improving, go to the documentation online documentation wiki and improve stuff. Uh, people will appreciate it. Number four of the things you can do is simply help others. This is my favorite, my personal favorite. Uh, it's a pretty easy, you might think, uh, uh, and it is. And if you help others with questions they have or problems or things they get stuck on or, or whatever, then the person you're helping will definitely be grateful. But there will also be other people around who see that you are helping others and uh, people in general will... Uh, well, start re um, respecting is, is the wrong word because people, well, they hopefully respect you anyway, but they will acknowledge you and know that this person, this guy or girl, uh, seems to be a really nice uh, fellow and I want to help that person sometime in the future when he or she gets a problem. Finally, uh, if you want to be a hero, true hero, then you can visit what's called the core office hours. This is a really good way of getting involved in Drupal core if you're a, a newbie and, and want to help in some way. You've installed Drupal a few times and clicked around, uh, but you really don't need to be an expert. Uh, if you want to get engaged in Drupal core, which can be really easy and you will be appreciated for it, then the core office hours is a really good place to start. Follow the link here if you uh, want to try it out. Uh, twice a week it happens online and yeah <sighs> and believe it or not this was the end of the quest the fifth quest has ended and we are awarded with Drupal and um, yeah that's it please rate this session if you got the link for it I sure haven't right now but hopefully I will later on yeah thank you bye